Hi everyone, Mr. K here with a, another Game Maker video. This time I'm going to do room transitions. But real quick before I get into that, uh, I just did want to thank everyone who's been subscribing and watching lately. Um, I made this channel as a supplement for my classroom and I'm sitting at over 200 subscribers. I'm not really sure how that happened, but thank you uh, for all the comments and the subscriptions. It's uh, it's nice. It's a very nice surprise, and it's been encouraging me to do more. Um, the unfortunate downside of this is that uh, I am a high school teacher, and uh, I'm doing this channel because I teach uh, a game maker course. And at the moment, I don't know what I'm teaching next year. I'm hoping I teach game maker next year. The only reason I'm teaching it this year was kind of a fluke, so I'm hoping they don't undo that fluke and let me stick around and teach it some more, because. I'm getting a kick out of it. Uh, I like doing the videos. I like teaching the course. And yeah, I'm hoping it continues. So um, if it doesn't, well, we'll see. Um, hopefully it doesn't. We don't have to worry about it. And I'll just keep making videos about Game Maker. Anyway, that's it. Enough rambling. Uh, let's actually get down to business. Room transitions. So the reason I'm doing this video is my class at the moment is finishing up their own individual games and one of the requirements I asked of them was to create a splash screen and splash screens if you've played games before know are the, those screens that come up just before the beginning of a game that tell you who made it who's involved and depending on the game there could be one of them there could be 15 of them so um, in order to dress things up a little bit I'm going to talk about room transitions so just so you can get things like fades and wipes and things like that and it's a little intimidating at first because it involves the draw uh, the um, excuse me using at least the way I'm doing it involves the draw event which is is scary at first once you get used to it it's like oh draw event whatever but at first it uh, it's very out there it's not the things you're used to when you're getting into game maker for the first time so um, let me run it for you first and then we'll go through the objects and everything and talk about it so I have a splash screen set up fades in fades back out and then we go to the title screen with a wipe down so I'm going to talk about those two basic tra room transitions and then from there you should be able to do whatever you like with it um, and get really creative all right, so I have the actual uh, background for my splash uh, my splash screen. And I have a font for my game title, um, and I have three objects here, and just only three. One's my fade in and out. This is used on my splash screen. This wipe down is used for the title screen, and then the title here just draws the room title. And I got two rooms themselves. There's the splash screen, and there is the title screen. Simple as that. <coughs> Excuse me. I hope I covered up the mic enough so you don't cough in your ear. Um, I'm just double checking something because I went through this a couple different ways, and yeah, I got rid of it. Um, the Game Maker forms were huge in how I'm showing me how to do the room transitions. I know in old versions of Game Maker they actually had room transitions built in, but they took them out um, for whatever reason. I think it was a compatibility issue because they were trying to do cross-platform. So now you got to do it all by yourself, which eh, it's a good and bad thing. It gives you a lot more control over it, and um, you can get really creative with it. So anyway, let's do, I want to do the wipe down first because it's a lot less complicated. So the idea here is basically you have a draw event, and the draw event is going to draw a rectangle, and you are going to move that rectangle each step of the game downward and of course you can do it differently you can move it left right you can do a diagonal thing I've seen it box out before um, it's up to you once you get the basics of it it's um, you can be really creative with it so let's start with the create event what's going on here we have some variables I need to declare wipe time rectangle y and d wipe it's uh, d derivative or uh, delta sorry change in wipe it's just me being weird you can call it whatever you want of course so wipe time is pretty self-explanatory how long you want the actual wipe to take in this case in seconds and then I'm declaring where the Y value of my rectangle is I'm starting it at the top and the idea is it's going to move all the way to the bottom and the change in wipe is determined based on the wipe time I put this in here just so it's um, a lot easier on my brain and hopefully your brain that you don't have to worry about oh how many steps is it going to have to 
take in order for me to know just how long do you want the thing to take it's half a second half a second you want it faster give it a quarter second I don't care but um, this is a little bit of math but basically it says okay we have to move the distance of room height so how long do we want that to take times room speed and just divide the two that's it so you put this in if you want it to take 10 seconds put in 10 it'll punch it in here and figure out exactly how many steps it's going to need to take um, that's it for declare variables and then we have our step event the step event is just going to shift our rectangle down so it takes a look to see if the rectangle is less than the room height the y value excuse me is less than the room height as long as that y value is less than the room room height it's going to increase it by well it's going to yeah it's going to increase the y value so lower the rectangle and it will keep lowering it until obviously it's not less than the room height and it's going to destroy itself so it stops doing something and the draw event is just drawing a rectangle. I got a black rectangle and its x position is zero. Y position, of course, is going to change. And room width, room width, excuse me, that's for the um, second, uh, excuse me, the second y, x, and y coordinate, room width and room height. And then false, this one right here determines if it's going to be an outline. Um, if you're drawing a solid uh, rectangle, leave that false. If you want an outline of a rectangle, mark it to true. So, uh, just to show you what that looks like again, I'll drag it to the top. And there it goes, wipes down. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll s prove that this works, and I'll slow this down. 56 seconds is a bit too long. Five's all right. There you go. And I wasn't counting. Those are YouTube timers, so you can see if it actually took five seconds or not. But that's that. It's not the most graceful transition in the world. I can see it stuttering a little bit. Um, the uh, fade in and fade out looks a lot better. I just put this in here so I can mix it up and show you that there are different types of transactions. You uh, transactions translations. Oh God, it's too early. Transitions that you can do. Okay, that's that. Let's put the splash screen back where it belongs, and let's take a look at the fade in and fade out. This one's going to be very similar. Uh, in fact, I get the same events with only added difference is global left press, go to the next room. Reason being, you've all played games before, I'm assuming, and splash screens get really freaking annoying after the first time you've seen it. First time, yeah, give me the whole experience. Give me every single splash screen, every single intro movie. I want to see what's going on. But after that, no, just get me in the game. So put an option in there for people to skip your splash screen. All right, they uh, just let them skip it, okay? Anyway, great. Same thing here, uh, a little bit different, uh, of course, because we're doing a fade. And this one's a little more complicated because we're fading in and out. It's not the fade that's complicated. It's the fact that we're fading in and then back out. So I have a couple of extra variables in here that didn't appear in the wipe. And that's this fade in and next room, which are both Boolean. Um, I like using Booleans because they're, you know, they make a little bit more sense as far as, you know, true, false. So um, fade in is set to true because we are going to be fading in to begin with. And next room signals if we're ready to move to the next room. So in this case, false. We are fading in. We are not ready for the next room yet. And then the rest of this is the same. Alpha basically takes care of how transparent something is. So I have the rectangle alpha set to 1, so it's completely opaque. You can't see anything behind it. And what's going to happen is we are going to change the alpha uh, down to 0. So that's a change of 1. Like before, we had room height. That was essentially the distance we wanted to uh, travel. Here, 1 is essentially a distance we want to travel. We want to travel from 1 down to 0 for the alpha. And we do the same thing here. Uh, we take the fade time times the room speed. Uh, the 0.5 is thrown in there because if we want the whole thing to be five seconds, that means it's a two and a half second wipe in or fade in and a two and a half second fade out. So of course, feel free to play with the numbers, but uh, that's the basic set for the declare of declaring of variables. Step event. A little bit hairier than the other one, but essentially the same, just with a couple extra variables thrown in there. I feel like I said that already. Whatever. Um, 
First things first, this if else statement here is going to take care of if we are fading in or out. And this last one here is going to determine if we're ready to go. It's going to check to see if we're ready to go to the next room. So let's talk about fade in and fade out. So if the rectangle alpha is greater than zero, which means it's not completely invisible yet. And on top of that, fade in is true. Then we're going to decrease the alpha. All right, so this is going to happen every single step until eventually what will happen is the rectangle alpha will hit zero and then this will kick back as false. Then we go into the else statement where we start increasing the alpha again. But the thing is if we're increasing the alpha that means this would kick back in so we need to have that fade in switched over to false. So now this one is off and there's no way we can return to it. And on top of that we want to signal that we're ready for the next room so we're going to flag that to true. Hopefully you're with me so far. This one was kind of dizzying to figure out. Now just because this is flagged as true doesn't mean we're automatically going to go to the next room. The if statement down here is going to dictate that and we're going to ensure that we actually go through the fade first. So it's going to look to see that next room is actually set to true and that the rectangle alpha is back to perfectly opaque. You can't see anything behind it. So what I will do is I will run this one more time and leave this off on the side so maybe you can look at it at the same time. Uh, real quick, the draw event. It's very similar to before. Um, the only difference is um, the position is static here, zero, zero. We're just setting the alpha and then we're, re we're resetting it afterwards just because as I saw someone else do it and figured it was a good idea because if you happen to be drawing something else afterward, these sets, they don't automatically reset. They're persistent. So if you put draw set alpha to something weird and then forget to change it back, everything's going to be drawn with that alpha. So an alpha is one of those weird ones that people don't think about, I guess, that often. Not like V line or H line or color. So that's in there. You really technically don't need it, I guess. But, um, uh, no harm. Anyway, so I'll leave this if statement down here. We'll run the game one more time just so you can see what's happening again. So we're going to go through the fade in. Rectangle alpha is fading there. The else statement just kicked in and then it was ready to go to the next room as soon as we blacked out. Let me do it one more time. Now going on the forums, oh crud, I screwed up. Going on the forums, uh, there were a couple different ways to do, us, uh, do this. I saw somebody try and do it with um, with um, backgrounds. You had multiple backgrounds and one faded, you know, perfectly black, and then it switches. And I'm sure there's a way you could do it where you increase that period of blackness before you go to the next one if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to try to do that off the top of my head because it will get ugly real quick. But anyway, um, I did see people try to do this with backgrounds and fading backgrounds, and that's how I initially did it. And it came out roughly the same, but when I tried doing a fade on top of my title screen, so it was this pure black background fading to a this blue background, it was terrible. It just, it didn't look good at all. It was stuttery, it was janky, it was just, it was, no, it was no good. Um, so I tried the drawing a rectangle method and that seemed to, uh, that looked a lot better. Um, in fact, if I get rid of this wipe down and put in a fade in and out, check, let's just move this up. Still not perfect, and of course the title screen thing is popping up in front of it because of my my draw events aren't stacked properly. Um, but anyway, my depths aren't set properly. Anyway, um, if you do see the background method, um, based on what I was doing, at least how I did it, I don't recommend it. Stick with uh, stick with drawing the rectangles, and uh, you'll have a little bit more success. For whatever reason, the drawing of the backgrounds, I guess it doesn't like it, doesn't process it well. Anyway. Um, that is it, and bye.